The Butler bubble is very real and it's very easy to get caught up in your own life and forget that there's a whole world out there. And so I think going out in the community and teaching is a much needed reality check. Because it took me from what I knew and threw me into this whole other situation with entirely different student um, populations. It just, my teaching style did not work very well there. So I had to change something. And it wasn't gonna be the, it wasn't gonna be the kids, it wasn't gonna be the facilities I taught at, it had to be me. And, and as you work with a student and you work with their parents, that's a perspective you're not gonna get in a classroom. And it gives you a perspective maybe of where the arts can fit in a community, in our case, Indianapolis, and then how those arts can impact that particular child. It opens your eyes up to different walks of life and different people, and I, I think that's always great. Yeah. BCS kind of builds a networking of students to not only grow as musicians, but people. So it's really taking a look at how to make the arts organizations or how to make the arts in general an integral part of every community and how do you make that a part of every citizen's life. Dean of Jordan College of the Arts, Peter Alexander, brought the vision to Butler of having a community arts school. So it was his idea and he asked me to be the first director. That was 15 years ago. I had no idea what I was signing up for. And then when I got in there, I was like, all right, well, this is a challenge, but I said I would do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna figure out a way to make this work. I think it's a very unique job. I mean, you obviously get paid for it, uh, but it goes more than just the money. It really goes and comes down to you, uh, you know, helping others and really getting to work with those people at, at large. You know, then like I said, you can't do at any other campus job. You know, to talk to my little friend Paisley, you know, about the boyfriend that she's dating, you know, it's really nice to step back away from the homework that I have and get to know these kids personally and hear updates about their life. So civic mindedness is just like how aware you are of your surroundings and like your civic engagement almost. It being humble and being simple and being very, very down to earth and just, you know, having that mindful thought. Engagement in the community and helping to support one's community. Regardless of like opinions or race or ethnicity, just like wanting to help people. Ideally impacting people that are around you. Putting others before yourself to believe in the power of community and collaboration. The awareness and understanding that you have about the world around you. Just being aware of community needs and trying to meet them when and how you can. One of the most surprising things I've learned along the way is how much I really do like teaching. I never really thought of myself as a teacher, but these classes I think have helped develop that side of me. And also I'm just constantly inspired by my fellow teachers. And like I said, after this experience, um, 
I, I really do enjoy teaching. In fact, this is a really good experience considering this is more or less the job I want to do as I get older, just on a higher like level. But over the course of it, I've definitely developed a lot more positive feelings because I always used to think of teaching as like something I would kind of just have to do. And now I realize that it, it's kind of fun. <laughs> I mean, to learn how to work with younger kids and how to connect with them and teaching yourself patience and discipline to work with them. And plus you're making money. So, I mean, I think it's like the best of both worlds. So even if someone isn't super dedicated, like, oh, I don't want to go into music education. Why would I be a teacher at the Butler Community Arts School? I would encourage them to rethink that and to give it a chance because it's, it's a, really is a wonderful program and there's wonderful kids out there who want to learn music. When the Community Arts School started and the Dean came to the university with this idea, everybody thought this was going to be only private lessons on campus. And then the first month that we were open, the Indianapolis Star did a really nice feature article and highlighted that we had scholarship students working with college students and that that was a different kind of a relationship than other arts education organizations were doing here in Indianapolis. The phone calls we started getting immediately after that article were from community organizations. Yes, some parents, but mostly community organizations saying, um, is there a way we can do this here in the community at our location? concept about community engagement is helping to no longer have it just be you know well here's the arts and aren't the arts nice um, but here's business here's um, here's education uh, it's taking a look at where the conversations where do all those things sort of merge and overlap and how do those different entities or those different parts of the community come together to improve the overall quality of life the foundations that have supported the community arts school one of the reasons they cite for continuing to support us is the dual mission. They like, they, of course they want to support arts for children and they want to support access to the arts, but they also like the idea that we're doing that with college students. So they'll often cite that there, there are multiple outcomes that, that they feel enrich Indianapolis. Also BCAS provides that opportunity to students that may not otherwise have it. We have a strong scholarship program and just such a wide opportunity that's advertised throughout the community so that hopefully students can find something that interests them. They work really hard to make sure that these opportunities, the educational opportunities, are accessible to as many students as possible, regardless of whether they're rich or poor, whether they're, you know, where geographically they're located. Another part of our funding model that's very important is that the university provides a number of services to the community arts school free of charge. We had rebranding throughout all of Butler University and the marketing department helped us get the word out about the school and that made us grow, obviously. And that's, an, that's important to the grant funders and it's important to the community because it shows that Butler is willing to put their money where their mouth is. I think what's really exciting about community, again going back to community engagement, is that it has the opportunity to help the arts organizations examine what is their relevance, what is their value, what value do they really add. And I think though there can be some really surprising things that come out of those discussions. The community engagement piece where the Butler students are off campus in the community, that grew very fast and wasn't what we expected when we started, but it's probably been the most fulfilling part of what we do because 
Um, what the Butler students tell me is that it's a different environment, uh, it's a different staffing, it's, it's not, everything's not, it's not a practice room like it is here on campus. And that's where they've learned the most because they've had to overcome more adversities in trying to figure out how to engage the children. My groups since working with the BCIS have been far more successful because I'm less likely to go, yeah, we're doing it my way though. I'm much more likely to listen and be like, all right, well, why are you, why are you re reacting so negatively to this kind of construction? What happened that on Tuesday you were in a great mood, but today you're in a bad mood? Like, what changed? Is it something that I'm doing or is there something at home that's changing things? That kind of thought process never entered my head before BCAS. Uh, they test my ability to be patient, to not lose my cool, you know. They also, um, you know, are there to give me that experience of teaching someone. And I, you know, and I'm there uh, giving them, you know, that experience of me sharing, like I said, sharing that craft of singing. So I think it's a two-way street in that regard. The skills that I learned and developed as an instructor has allowed me to carry that where I go because I've offered private voice lessons now in several different settings and I wouldn't be able to do that if I didn't start out with BCAS. One teacher who came, came in and, and said, I thought I was gonna be teaching eighth notes to, I don't remember the girl's name, over the weekend, it was a, and she was a strings, a strings teacher. And she said, and really I learned more about the child's home life, things that I had no idea, and I now can see that's why she is the way she is. And that means I have to adapt my teaching. She said, I learned far more than what the student learned in that lesson. And also being a student, you tend to just mix amongst your peers. I mean, if it weren't for teaching, I wouldn't be interacting with four-year-olds or families or adults or working adults from outside, you know. I mean, I would not be aware of these things at all. It's not all about tomorrow's test or uh, tonight's rehearsal or anything like that. Like, it helps you see the bigger picture of why you're doing this and why this is important. Another teacher came to talk to me because he didn't know how to, how to process the fact that his student's violin had been stolen. Because he had never in his entire life dealt with theft. And so that was something he had to work through with that student and understand the perspective of what that family was going through. And especially at our end of the year recital, that's when we really all came together and got to see how much the students learned and how much they enjoyed it. And even for their parents to see them dancing, a lot of them never thought that their students would be able to do ballet or high energy or dance. So the fact that we all of us, whether it's the teaching assistants that were just starting or our senior teachers, we got to see how much of an impact it was on the kids and the community and what more it could bring if we continue with it. You know, when our undergraduate students help out with camps and they stay in the dorms, they are immersed in this world of middle school and high school students and I think it's a very special thing that they may not get anywhere else. Um, and I think that plays a lot into our mission, well, the BCS mission statement of fostering civic mindedness in our university students because they can't help but see things from their students' perspective when they're just around them all day long. My actions of how I want to help better the community, whether that's just the Indianapolis community or whether it's through volunteering or teaching or donating money or just saying hi and being friendly to the person as you walk down the street or you know the bus driver or something like that. It's, it's definitely a lot of small actions that add up over time. So for the Butler Community Art School, you know that would mean if someone wants to learn cello, I would want to give them lessons. You know, being willing and open to teach anyone who wants to take lessons regardless of age or what their background is or how many years they've had lessons before. A greater appreciation, this is me personally, for the community as a whole, not just my part of the community. Now that being said, 
is that you know we all have to in order to be good providers we have to take care of ourselves so we have to continue to feed our um, our imaginations our creativity so that we in turn can pass that on to others and so community mindedness is that the phrase that you're looking at civic mindedness I mean civic is civic is community and it's about the again the community good so I think that that that's just you know putting the whole before the individual is what it's all about <laughs>